Okay, so um, this is kind of like a part three on the porch deck thing. Um, I guess I can cover the stairs, building stairs. And then uh, there was a comment or two yesterday, which somehow I think when I was recording, um, I must have hit the pause button and then hit it again. And so I paused and then I unpaused. And so I had some, some commentary about using one of these, which is a cat's paw, and using it in a manner to uh, take the curve out of crowned uh, pieces of wood. When Because I, I install these deck boards tight together because they're green. I don't mean they're green in color. Yeah, they're green in color. The green meaning they're, they haven't been kiln dried. So they're going to shrink. Um, so I put them tight together, and then over time they'll dry. And then when they dry, you'll end up with, you know, three sixteenths, maybe at the most a quarter inch gap between them. If, if you gap them first, and then they dry, now you're gonna have, you're gonna have big gaps, and it could be dangerous. It, it doesn't look good, and then it could be dangerous for a woman with high heels, um, or stuff could fall down in between that you don't want to. Whatever, whatever. So the best thing to do when you're using lumber that's not dried yet, which pressure treated lumber always comes uh, undried. Um, is to put them tight together and then and then just let this open up over time uh but anyway so you know these come these are five quarter which means they're inch thick and they're they're uh, you know so sometimes they're crowned meaning they're they're warped across the flat way not across the edge which is called bowing so when they're crowned um and you need to you need to get that out of uh out of the board uh, if it's a really bad crown, I turn the board over. I always look for the best side of the board. So I, I, when I go to install them, I look which side is the best, and I install with that side up. Because usually one side is a little better than the other. The knots are smaller, the knots are better, there's no knots, whatever it is. It's a better grain, whatever it is. Now these are going to get painted, but still, you know, uh, you don't want any more knots than you, than you have to. Uh, so anyway, so uh, okay, so that being said, so I select the best side of, of, of the board, and then the what I call the back side, I may cut across the board, maybe half of its thickness. So this is an inch thick. So I might cut, and I just do it by eye, but you might want to set your saw. So I might cut through, set the saw blade a half inch. So if I go to if it's crowned really bad, to to the point where it's going to take a lot of force to, to straighten it out against against the one that you just uh, installed uh, an inch thick of lumber by, by, by you know five and a half six inches is, is a lot to try to straighten out especially if it's a shorter length I mean these are a little bit under six foot because it's a six foot deck and then minus the, the width of, of this so uh, it can be a little a, a little bit tricky so I'll do that just to, and I do it right over where a floor joist is because you don't want to do it out here somewhere because it's it's going to make the, the board weaker because now you've only got a half inch of material so you're going to want to you're going to make that cut where it sits on top of a floor joist and then you turn it back over you don't you don't see it but it makes the board much easier to straighten out because you're not straightening you're straightening half as much lumber um anyway so so what i'll do is if, um is i'll take um uh, this cat's paw here it's called a cat's paw I don't know why, but it's a, it doesn't look like a cat's paw. It looks more like a, I don't know, a pig's hoof. Anyway, um, and over so where the where a floor joist is, so I'll, I'll I'll install the board and I'll put one nail in it on one end. I'll go down to the opposite end, or even one joist before the opposite end. But usually on the opposite end on the floor joist down here. And then I'll I'll take this cat's paw. So this is the piece of flooring here that you're trying to straighten out. So you go down the opposite end, and you take that cat's paw, you stick it in the middle of the joist up 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 against the piece you want to straighten, and you you pound real hard, and you try to get this this tip here to go in. You know, I mean, close to a half inch. I mean, you want it to go in a pretty good amount. It's not going to hurt the floor joist. It's going to put a few little holes in it, but it doesn't matter. You need to straighten the board out. You can't do it by hand. Anyway, so you pound this in a pretty good amount, and then you just take and you, you take your hand, 
and you pull back on it like that, it creates quite a bit of force because it's stuck into the floor joist, it's tied up against here, now you're gonna go and pull it, it's gonna move that, it's gonna move that over. It's gonna, gonna move this over. And then, so you'll pull it so it's tied up against the other one. And then before I stuck the cat's paw, what I usually do is I'll pound the nail in so it's almost all the way through, almost ready to touch this, but not quite, because you don't want it to go in. Obviously, you're not gonna to try to move it uh, with the nail stuck into the floor joist, but you, you get it ready. And then while I'm holding it with one hand, sometimes it takes quite a bit of strength, um, I'll hold it with one hand, tie it up against this one, and I'll get that nail pounded in, and then I can release this, the, the pressure on this, and take it out. That'll straighten your board out. And unless the board's really bad, uh, you, you can straighten it out. But like I said, if it's really bad, sometimes you have to uh, cut part, part of the way through it just to, to take some of the wood fiber uh, out so that you can you can straighten it. Anyway, so um, I was trying to cover that. Yes, like I said, I think I hit the the mute button, not the mute button, the, um, the pause button, because the, I was talking about the cat's paw and I was going to jump to something else, so I think I, I re-hit the pause button and unpaused it, so anyway, sorry about that. Um, anyway, yeah, so so that's that was the part I wanted to cover yesterday, and then as far as these, these stairs, um, I'm not going to get into how to figure stair treads. There's plenty of videos on that, plenty of information on the internet. Every, every situation is different. Um, so you can, you can find that, you know, how to get your, your, your rise in there. I do my run, okay, so I'll say how I do my run. So this is your rise. You know, it's the tricky part for most people, figuring out what the rise should be. And then knowing that the, the, the last rise is always the thickness of whatever your tread is, whether it's inch and a half or inch material. It's that rise m minus the thickness of your tread because you're not adding another tread down here. So, so that's as far as we'll go with that. But as far as my, my run... Um, I like an inch and a half overhang, inch and a quarter to inch and a half overhang. So when I put my my tread on, all right, so it'll overhang here an inch and two quarter to inch and a half. I just think it looks aesthetically good. I also like it an inch and a half this way. Now I don't do it on the riser. The riser is, is, is cut flush here, but I like an inch and a half here also at each end. An inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. I just I just think it looks decent. I mean, if, if you cut them all the same, it looks kind of weird. So, and, and you'll see when you put, put the stairs together. But anyway, so what I do is I... So I've got two of these, and right now they're five and five eighths wide. Five and three quarter, depends, because they're, they're, they haven't dried yet. Uh, so anyway, so that, that gives you... So if it's five and five eighths and five and five eighths, it's eleven and a quarter. And... Uh, I like an inch and a half over overhang on the front, so I take the eleven and a quarter, subtract an inch and a half, so I get the overhang when two of these are, are on here and they're tight together. And so I made this ended up being nine and three quarter. So, and because I'm putting one of these also here, it 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 it, it will give me my inch and a half overhang. So I've got a, I've got one of, one of these here for my riser, so it, it'll give me an inch and a half overhang when I put two of these together. Uh, so that was my decision on that. Um, sometimes you have constraints on. There's no constraints here. I can, I could make them 20 inches wide. It wouldn't matter. Just be farther down the sidewalk. So you might have constraints where you have to make it smaller. There is codes. You can't go too small. I don't know what the codes are, but um, I'm, I'm, I think it's like nine inches or something. So it, that's pretty small. Also, I could have, I could have done this in one less tread so I could have had one two three three steps up this is this is your last step um, I did four steps because I would have been right at the, the limit I think the limit for tread height uh, for tread height for riser height is I think it's seven and three quarter inch there's a limit on how high a step can be um, I would have been like right there because of the total height and uh, the good thing would have been is I wouldn't have to put a railing because if you're three steps or less, you don't need a railing. If you're four steps, or more than three steps, or four steps or more, you have to put a railing at least on one side. So that would have been an advantage. Don't have to build a railing. But for me, a railing looks nice, makes the house look nicer, because I'm going to have a railing here, too, all, all the way around eventually. Uh, so anyway, so I went with four steps. I think they're, they're a little bit under six inches high each. So um, I think my total height was 23 and a half inches. Yeah, so they're, they're under under six inches each 
uh, anyway, yeah, so that's that's how I did that. And then to secure these, um, I had put, it's covered in a previous video, but I put, there's blocking. There's a two by six on the flat, behind this plywood, um, on the flat where this is gonna be, so it gives me something to nail into. Um, there's one here behind this one and one here behind that one because the the framing layout on this didn't it didn't end up with a two by four it's a 16 inch center layout here <clears throat> so it didn't it didn't end up where, where it needed to be so i just put a two by six on the flat so that i have something to nail into and then so I toenailed a few nails in and then i put two by four blocking between here nailed that really well um because there's 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 some surface to nail to here then nailed it here really well and then i nailed in from the side also so this is locked in it's not just toe nailed in it's toenail but it's also locked in to these which are nailed very well two two by fours uh and i did the same thing on the other side so as you can see it's nailed very well and then it's nailed in from this side i did the same thing with, with the middle one and that way this thing is just never going anywhere okay and then as far as um uh sitting on the concrete i did have to shave the bottoms a little bit i like the bottoms to sit pretty flat on the concrete so that the weight is distributed across here and you don't have all your weight maybe on, maybe if it's not sitting right and all the weight is on here or if it's tipped back a little bit all the weight is on the back and this could you know this is a um, a weak point because of the way the grain runs when you cut these out of a 2x12 so it's a, it's a weak point and it could crack off over time if, if these aren't sitting firmly in the concrete so I did trim a little bit to get them to sit evenly I also uh, I also nailed a 2x4 that runs from here all the way back to here which I, I nailed in this way giving this this here's your weak part in here right because your grain is is running this way so it strengthens up that one and it strengthens up this one here so it's nailed in this way with a lot of nails i don't know 15 or 20 whatever it is and then i'll do the same thing here i'll do in the middle one i'll, I'll put one here it doesn't need to go all the way back to here it just needs to to protect this this first tread because now you've got grain running this way which is not going to break off these can over time break off like it could break off like right here because it'll follow this this grain right so this is kind of a, a weak point this first one uh, anyway yeah so the reason i ran these all the way back is because i'm going to have to put a piece of hardy panel here to cover this little this little triangle space uh, so I need something to nail two down here. So when I ran this one back here, which is the long one, then I, I scabbed another little piece on the front to bring this all flush. And then I'll just cut a piece of hardy hardy panel, and I'll fit it here, and that'll that'll close it up. It's all it's all gonna be painted. This will be siding. Anyway, so you'll see when it's finished. I'll get to that point when when we finish, do the finish work. And then because I need to put a post, well, it's actually on this side. So I'm going to need a 4x4 post for the railing, which I'm going to do down the road. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to put these treads on. I'm going to screw them in so I can take the screws out and get the post positioned properly. And then I'll nail them in. Um, but the, the deck screws will allow me to at least to, to be able to remove them and install the post. I wanted this to be really strong because I've only got this much height, which is, you know, like six inches to hold a three foot post so i need this i can't sink the post into the ground because it's concrete here so the post is going to start here so i need to make it very secure so i needed to strengthen this up so i put blocking in between so i ran uh i ran blocking piece of blocking here blocking here nailed it in really well uh, and then i've got this fascia piece riser piece here uh, on the front that also locks it in so now when i go to to install the four by four post which i'll notch to fit around here so it'll probably come in about this far it'll come out three and a half inches and, and down uh, i've got plenty of wood and strength to secure the bottom of it so the railing isn't weak you know up, up at the top uh, so anyway so that's kind of how i did that um, if i if i was able to have the post come down farther or buried into the ground of course it wouldn't be as important but 
I wanted to, to make this, you know, as strong, as strong as I could. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's that. Um, I think that kind of covers everything. Let's see, I covered the cat's paw part. Yeah. This basic step framing, like I said, if you want to learn how to, to figure your heights and, and do all that, there's there's plenty of videos. I mean, that's a whole video in itself. But anyway, this is kind of a simple basic stair layout. Um, I kind of covered all the, all the basics, at least how to how to put it together, how to make it work. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, back to work.